All right, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful Thursday, October 26, 2023. Uh, just about noon here along the West Coast, so almost afternoon time here. A little bit warmer today, about 63 degrees as we speak, uh, as far as the weather goes here in Northern California. Latest activity on the globe looks like a 4.0. And the red flag down there into the region of the Middle America Trench. A little bit of activity stirring up there today. Also down in the Southern California, got a handful of earthquakes just outside the Salton Sea area. Uh, these earthquakes coming in following a 2.8, about 2 o'clock this morning or so. It is off of the Brawley Seismic Zone at the uh, extreme southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, no major swarming kicking up here, just a little bit, little bit of activity stirring up there today. We'll continue to watch that, though, see if that advances into some type of swarm. Uh, also up here uh, near the San Bernardino Mountain Range, getting a handful of uh, microquakes as well. Let's go ahead and check out the 2.5 map and above just to see if we're missing anything. It looks like that 2.8 down here in the Salton Sea area is one. Uh, four earthquakes above the 2.5 threshold. The latest one shows a 3.5 near Little Lake. That's uh, just north of Ridgecrest area. Uh, so slight, little slight uptick today across the west coast. Also got one earthquake up here uh, into northern Nevada uh, near the Fort Bidwell area. Well, outside of there. But this earthquake, 3.8, uh, occurred in the Sheldon uh, National Antelope Refuge area. I don't know if that's still the name of it, but it was when I went up there a few years back to check out a uh, pretty good earthquake swarm that was kicking up out here. Uh, right now, though, just a 3.8. Pretty shallow earthquake. There's a lot of old volcanic features out here in the land. I remember seeing that. Uh, some beautiful area. A lot of uh, desert and not a whole lot of nobody out there. Lots of dirt roads, and uh, that was quite a trip. Pretty fun, actually. Uh, Mount St. Helens, still seeing some movement up here this morning as well. Actually, it looks like just prior to midnight, a uh, couple smaller earthquakes there at the volcano. Nothing going on today, at least according to these folks here at the USGS. Uh, Yellowstone, nothing going on specifically across the park. So let's double check that, just make sure real quick and see what we got. Uh, let's see, there is a, uh, looks like a small amount of earthquake activity there across the Yellowstone Park region, and what looks like a, um, a more distant earthquake here on the map. Let's see where that's coming from. Oh, I bet you that's going to be that 3.8, uh, just a couple hours ago. Let's see here, 937, 3.8 Nevada. That's going to be this one right here, I believe. Some, I mean, that's almost a four-pointer, so uh, sometimes those moderate earthquakes will show up distantly. Uh, it doesn't look like it hit every graph up here across Yellowstone, but uh, it did make a little little blip there on the seismograph stations. But as far as local activity goes, it uh, looks like a little bit last night. And, um, well, not a whole lot as far as uh, earthquake activity at Yellowstone. All right, uh, bring this back up here. Uh, Texas definitely getting filled in today here across the oil fields. Uh, a lot of this though, from late last night. Quite a few twos out there. Uh, same for the Oklahoma area. And even one earthquake outside of Wichita. Kansas up here, 2.3. Uh, that earthquake coming in yesterday. So it looks like a lot of older movement uh, activity across the, the southern plains from yesterday. Uh, the Middle America Trench down here. Quite a few fours stirring up here. That's where we're seeing some earthquake activity right now. Looks like another four-pointer coming in uh, to this area. Getting some uh, earthquake activity here across the divergent boundary out in the Atlantic Ocean. 4.7 earthquake. Uh, that's a pretty recent earthquake. Let's see if the USGS is reporting it. Doesn't look like they are, but uh, EMSC model globe is. Uh, aside from that, the rest of the Atlantic, aside from, uh, from some movement up north in Iceland, uh, still seeing a little bit of activity stirring up there, aren't we? That's a little crazy. Uh, well, we'll continue to check back on that and see if anything uh, advances as far as uh, volcanic activity goes in that region. 
South America, quite a few twos out there today. And uh, even a couple fours, it looks like, down into the area of the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, nothing major going on there for now, but uh, as always, keep an eye on this area. Uh, across New Zealand, north and south of New Zealand, still seeing some movement. Did see a 5.9 earthquake near the uh, Macquarie Island area, well south of New Zealand on the plate boundary here uh, between the uh, Antarctic and the Australia plates. A divergent boundary, meaning a separation of the uh, seafloor out there, spreading center. Uh, still leaves New Zealand right there in the X marks the spot area, but it just hasn't filled in in terms of uh, earthquake activity. Looks like maybe a couple smaller quakes there across the region today, uh, but nothing spectacular going on across New Zealand, at least for now. 3.9 out here on the Java Trench, going to be in the green flag. Looks like that uh, is pretty deep into the uh, subduction zone here, 253 kilometers deep. Uh, also some activity up into the extreme edge here of this plate boundary. It's going to be up into China. A little bit of movement showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe here with a 4.1 and a couple smaller quakes there in that area. And uh, of course, middle the uh, Mediterranean area, seeing some uh, twos and whatnot over there. As far as any major uh, movement overnight, the largest one uh, looks like that 5.9 south there of New Zealand. And also, it looks like we've seen something up here north into the Crow Kamchaka. A little bit of adjustment going on here. Uh, 5.9, very shallow earthquake here off the coast of Russia. Looks like it's more on the Aleutian Trench side of this plate boundary. So we've got two 5.9s. Uh, this one occurring just after midnight. This one occurring a couple hours ago. It's very possible that's what, uh, what have we got, three hours ago? That's pro possible. That's what we've seen up here. One of these marks is going to be that 5.9. All right, let's see. The Big Island of Hawaii. Looks like this is kicking back up here today. Earthquake activity. That means inflation activity is kicking back up as well. They're across Kilauea Volcano. Let's go ahead and double check this here from the uh, Volcano Hazard site there from the USGS. We'll key this in real quick and see what we have there across the area of Kilauea Volcano. Here is the tilt meter once again. Notice this last night uh, taking a a rise back into inflation status after uh, a couple days of deflation. But this has been the overall trend here. Uh, seems like over the past 30 days, a few days of inflation followed by about two days of deflation. We're just coming, uh, recovering back from a deflation event. Uh, notice that inflation starting to kick back up, but it doesn't quite look like it's uh, reaching its high points yet compared to previous inflation uh, levels there in the past month, but we'll continue to watch that and see if that rises back up or not. That's obviously a sign of uh, intruding magma below. Uh, for now, the latest information here on the uh, Kilauea volcano this put up or this update was put up today. It is currently not erupting, and uh, looks like the unrest uh, south of the summit has continued over the past 24 hours with a slight increase in seismicity in association with an intrusive event. That began in early October, so we'll continue to watch this as uh, earthquake activity is picking up there on the map and also inflation returning to this area here of the Kilauea Volcano just south of the crater area. Noticing a, a broader region here of uh, earthquake activity uh, across uh, Pahala and also Mauna Loa still seeing some movement as well. Uh, I think this area underneath this region is definitely... Uh, getting a, a sizable magma um, accumulation underneath this region here. Uh, looks like it may be affecting certain areas at the surface as well. We'll have to watch that and see if it stirs up anything around Mauna Loa. Although those two are on different plumbing systems, so to speak, in terms of the magma and the, uh, the way it travels to the surface. Uh, 2.5 way up north here 20 kilometers deep Let's see if we got anything spectacular going on that we missed doesn't look like it uh, i'll just continue to watch the activity today a little bit of movement here into the sea of crete looks like that stirred up here just after midnight or so my time 
a couple fours in this area. Uh, space weather activity, of course, looking at uh, a little bit of sea flare activity kicking up here in the last 24 hours. Very minor sea flare activity, but it is a sign of potentially some uh, sunspot growth coming around the eastern limb of the sun. We did see an unexpected uh, CME, well not a CME, but a, an aurora event last night. Wasn't really forecasted here, but it did peak up in the four, almost to the G1 class storm category here. Seen some auroras at the higher latitudes. That was mainly due to uh, uh, southward tipping uh, BZBT component, allowing some solar wind stream to flow in here uh, to this beautiful planet. Uh, far as uh, flare threat goes, still looks like it's 20% chance and then 1% uh, for the rest of the flare category. Sea flare, obviously, we've been popping a little bit here, but we're still quiet in terms of uh, uh, the potential that we should be seeing here in solar maximum. A look at uh, the magnetogram image here. It does show... Uh, couple sunspots coming around the eastern limb of the sun but they do not look all that promising we will keep an eye on it though in the coming days just in case something decides to uh develop we do have a chrono hole though though that we are watching 66 and 65 which is almost dead center looking at earth uh that will amplify some conditions here um across the uh solar storm Forecast here in the coming days, more than likely towards the end of this month, potentially right around Halloween night. So we'll see uh, how strong this uh, Corona Hole event is. Either way, we should get some uh, adjustment to this three-day. Well, we'll get a little bit of adjustment following these days here later on towards the end of this month, which is literally like right now. I can't believe we got November coming up. Crazy. All right, Storm Prediction Center. Not a whole lot of severe weather today, folks. Uh, a slight marge, or there's a little marginal risk down there. It looks like for a 2% chance for tornado probability uh, outside of College Station, Texas, Austin area in there as well. So just a heads up. A little bit of uh, wind events as well from uh, any thunderstorm activity. The uh, numerical model out here, far as the assembles go, this will give us a good indicator of where it's going to be nice and cool, where it will be above average temperatures. And right now, a uh, pretty good high pressure system over there across the eastern uh, areas of the states. That's going to get bumped off and uh, replaced with a little, well, I should say, no, I shouldn't say little, actually a pretty large low pressure system here. Bringing with it some cooler temperatures there for the uh, Halloween time frame and into the first week of November, it looks like. Uh, going to have to watch this because there, this map at least shows a massive high pressure area across the west coast. I'm hoping that's not the case, but uh, it is that time of year where things start to, uh, you know, they, they switch all over the place. The patterns change. It is an El Nino year, so we should be looking at uh, a strong Pacific jet uh, aiming at California as we uh, get a little bit deeper into our rainy season which technically begins sometime in November, lasting through about April here for uh, California. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on any changes. Either way, cooler temperatures. I think we're done with the 80s, 90s, and the 100s for, for this year. All right, folks, um, have yourself a good one. And uh, we will catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Uh, look at the live seismograph stations. Show... Well, pretty calm conditions out here for now. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up on these live seismograms. We'll catch you guys later. Take care.